leaving the Lake Conroe Thousand Trails. It's raining. Yay. Oh, you're adding pepper to my soup? Back when I was doing the Crusades, this is known as the Death Door. I like this too. On the road again. Bye bye, Thousand Trails. No! Oh. There's the first Bucky's that Angie and I stopped at three years ago. And we're gonna drive right on by because honestly, I'm just not a fan of Bucky's. I like their store. I just, for a fuel stop and parking, I know windshield washer. They have no rags. They've got no window washer squeegees. There's no paper towels at the, uh, at the pumps. Um, I mean, hey, they have fantastic brisket sandwiches and their stores are the supermarket of convenience stores, but I'm just not a fan. And if I'm gonna spend my money, I'm going to patronize somebody that I think caters to the RV industry. In my opinion, they don't. I mean, I think it's kind of crazy to stop in there and not be able to wash your windshield, right? No window washer squeegees. Or park your RV. And everybody's always saying how, oh, well, they have such fantastic bathrooms. Yeah, and we, they may have fantastically clean bathrooms, but we have our own bathroom right behind us. Goliad, Texas is known as the birthplace of Texas ranching. It's the third oldest municipality in Texas, having been settled by the Spaniards in the 16th century. It is home to many points of interest, including the Presidio La Bahia, the Espiritu Santo Mission, and of course the infamous hanging tree located on the town square of Goliad. Mission Espiritu Santo was built in 1749. So I'm out here on the north side of the mission and this is known as the death door. And so uh, people uh, would leave this door after funerals to be taken to a cemetery to be buried as opposed to on the opposite side of the mission is the light, the door of light. We're gonna step in here. So you have the door of light right there. Around the corner, I'm not sure if I'm gonna see it, is the, is the front door over there of the mission. And before being converted and baptized, you're only allowed to enter the mission through the door of light. After you are converted and baptized, you can come through the front door. So this is the front door of the mission. And as I mentioned earlier, um, back in the day, um, you had to be baptized, converted and baptized before you were allowed entrance into the mission area here. And I'm not Catholic. I don't know all the ins and outs. I don't know if that's across the board, but I'm gonna walk in here. Hope I don't get struck by lightning. And uh, again, this was a training ground um, the, the main focus of the mission was to train the Native Americans. Before being baptized and converted, you would come in the light door right there. And um, after being converted, you come in the main door and listen to it echo. So here we have a mock-up of a confessional. And according to one of the rangers that we spoke to, once a month when they did have mass and a confession in here uh, the native americans would come in here one at a time while soldiers guarded the doors when they held that confession because as you can hear there is a pretty good echo in here so if you had uh, all of your friends family and neighbors sitting in here while you were confessing they would know all your sins so one of the things about this particular mission is you have the window of illumination and the window up there on Easter, 
on April 16th would cast light right down here and the light would slowly work its way up the floor and then focus on Jesus up there and I'm not sure what exactly that is called I don't know if that's a panel system again not Catholic so forgive me really cool so here's our tour of mission Espiritu Santo. So now Angie and I are going to run our bikes over to the Presidio La Bahia, which is actually still owned and operated by the Catholic Church. It's continued to be a chapel over there. Um, because it's not part of the park system, there's a fee to get in. And Angie's going to tell you about this tree right here. This tree which is budding right now. Tell them a little bit about this tree, Ange, that we learned. Well, I just asked what kind of a tree it was because it is budding. And she said it was the sandpaper tree. And she gave us a leaf and it feels like sandpaper. It's weird. That's a tactile thing. If you're teaching a bunch of kids or yeah. students of whoever, yeah. as soon as she handed that leaf to Angie, she was like, Yes, it's sand this is sandpaper. <laughs> I was going to say, they, on this little marker here, it says that they were a cannibalistic Indian. Oh, <gasps> what? The cannibal, even the cannibalistic Indians. I wonder which ones were cannibalistic. I don't know. So, for those historians out there, which ones were the cannibalistic Indians? Maybe we'll find a ranger and they'll explain us to us which ones, right? Okay, so I'm going to dome this Spanish male. I feel like I need a lance. <laughs> nice. Tengo que hablar con el director de la escuela. Really? I've never heard that. I just said I'm going to see the principal. Oh gosh. <laughs> Presidio La Bahia is the only remaining restored Presidio west of the Mississippi and it is still under control of the Catholic Diocese of Victoria. Now, all funds that uh, come to this place are through donations and the entrance fee to come here and visit. So much history here in Texas that being not being from Texas, I was unaware of. Of course, I was aware of a lot of Texas history because of Fess Parker and John Wayne. Oh gosh. Right? Um, yeah. Well, it's a huge amount of land too. You know, the Alamo, certainly remember the Alamo and those shows played a part in my youth and this area over here in Goliad saw the life loss of a lot more life than they did at the Alamo. I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is you know, Angie and I visited the Alamo. I was very impressed with the Alamo. Um, had to go to the Alamo. Didn't even know about this place until we just arbitrarily drove through it. By happenstance, and I did a little bit more research and I'm kind of surprised that there's not more touristy traffic coming to this area. Really fun. And cool. and to be honest, and to be frank, I mean, I would much rather come back here and spend some time exploring this area than go to San Antonio and deal with that. Hordes of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, look around. We're we're standing, as I think I already mentioned, in the only active presidio in the United States. There's, uh, uh, I don't know, there's two other people, three other people here with us. Well, and the chapel is still used today. Yeah. Goliad was where the first Declaration of Texas Independence was signed on December 20th, 1835 at the Presidio La Bahio, which at the time was renamed by the locals as Fort Defiance. 
It was also where the Goliad Massacre took place on Sunday, March 27, 1836. The Goliad Massacre took place after General Santa Anna ordered the execution of over 450 prisoners captured by General Urea after the Battle of Kalito. So here we are at the town square in Goliad, standing next to the hanging tree. And according to uh, information I saw on the internet, they never kept track, but at least a uh, hundred, hundred if not more, people were hanged from this tree over the years. So maybe, maybe the courthouse is haunted. I'm not sure. It sure is a cool old courthouse. So we made it to the Blue Quail restaurant. We placed our order. I ordered a club. I think Angie you ordered the chicken salad. I did, and it's the Blue Quail Deli. Here on uh, Town Square in Goliad, and it's dog friendly. They allowed Jazz to come in. She's she's waiting there patiently, and we're waiting for our meal. We'll see how that jalapeno cream soup goes. Angie's gonna she's gonna try the first bite. It looks delicious. It's good. It's kind of cheesy. It's kind of cheesy. Kind of. Is there a bite to it? Oh, you're adding pepper to my soup. That's my soup. It might not have needed the pepper. You know, it's got some warmth after. It's delicious. It's really good. Okay, now for me. Here we go. Let's give this a try. It's really good. Would you drive 1,500 miles for the soup? Because basically we just kind of did. Northern Utah no, did, to here. I wouldn't drive just for the soup, but if I was in the area, I would definitely stop. It was really good. Definitely. Yeah, it's when you swallow, it kicks you in the back of the throat. <laughs> I, you know, you won't get that till you swallow. At least I didn't. Wow. Oh, I like it. I like it too. So of course, while we're waiting, um, Kyle and Ryan from, is it in my mustache? No. Kyle and Ryan from KR Destinations popped up alive. Look, Kyle. There you are. <laughs> it's delicious. I like this town. It has a good vibe, has a good feel. I like the balconies. I like the people that we run into. It's just been, I don't know, it's a feel good thing. I haven't been to a town in a long time that I went, oh, but this is, I like this town. Even though you're standing underneath a tree that over a hundred people over the years have hung from. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe their spirits are here. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe you're getting that, that uh, paranormal feeling from them. I don't know.